bitter. <laughs> As more dispossessed drop out and begin to dream that they can remain driven in this systematic oppression of imagination and other aspects of the human experience that are marginalized by the cynical and called childish, in this lifestyle that is depressing and on trial if you don't work to afford a home and telephone connection. I argue that doing what you love is the most responsible thing you can commit yourself to. And the constant state of sexual frustration sold as a gimmick in the product placement of the cultural norms promoted to push the economy forward by capitalist standards finds its equivalent in the stage of maturity known as adolescence, and it's been going on now for generations. We've all been reduced to the mental state of awkward children. You in the face, a child. You at the center, a child. And you're a child, but they've outlawed the concept of play after a certain age and replaced it with beer while you're watching the game to stupefy your complaints. And they say, well, that's life. That's just the way it is. And I say, if this is life, then play with it and reclaim your head full of images because it isn't just. I'm no utopian idealist. The idealist? I'm no utopian idealist. It's an uphill battle. It's a cold world with winter chill up and down the spine and frostbite for your extremities when you defend your need to escape from the bounds and chains they've used to command you to play by rules, play by play, freeze frame, dictate. Take a message. I will choose to make my own fate. Making it up is a way of figuring it out. Now I'm down and in the second quarter of my life living by the left field choices that I make and the optimists are disappointed when they serve as live bait. But this no hoper is surprised again. I had a nice day. I was simply sent to observe in the strictest sense of the word with no fantasies of ever really making change. All I can do is share my insights. And here's a few. Continuous perspective is a persistent delusion that I wake up in the same body every day. It's arbitrary. Feel those cells change. Know yourself dies with every thought that you have. Experience of consciousness escapes and then returns anew. And it's still you, but it could have been anyone. The silence observing behind the darkness of shut eyelids is shared by all through a medium that is never the same. Electric meat that remembers each painful event. And that's universal. You are are them. So the only thing that makes you an individual being is your particular brand of wishful thinking. <laughs> it appears to go on endlessly. In front of the mirror, we have met the enemy. Goes by the name of me, the people. We, the evildoers. We are me. I emulate the sentient being. While you pretend to be human on autopilot, barely know what we're doing. It appears to go on endlessly. You ought to try to impersonate the entropy for once, and suddenly every scheduled activity seems especially absurd. Essentially, <laughs> I've learned the effort to preserve the structure standing still amounts to discord in the symphony. But they go on conducting business as usual. Not what you know, but who you know to get you out of the draft. Well, the poorest enlist for it's the only way they'll be able to afford to get off the streets and somewhere in that chain of command, the decision is made. And though the grunts know the young soldiers on the other side are in the same boat, acting out the conflict between their drunk with power leaders far removed from any violence, nonetheless, someone in the chain of command will order them to shoot. And though they may hesitate, they'll do it anyway because of the possibility of dying and knowing the other side will feel the same. Some link in the chain of command will fire. Some link in the chain will command, compelled to break you down and rearrange your humanity, alter your authority imprint. Primitivists can Shakespeare's 